Defibrillation. We're going to talk about a cardiac conduction system. Do not do this at home. Um, he is a trained professional. So here we have the chain of survival of most of it. Uh, the key part, point of showing this to you is that EMTs need to get there quickly, perform early CPR and early defibrillation. You already know that cells start to die within four to six minutes. When we have EMS system who's proud of 11 and a half minute ETAs on average, and all of you have witnessed this, that it may be a lot more, um, may as well not even bother. And you just may as well, they may as well not bother showing up. That's why our agency prides ourselves on getting there as fast as possible, within a minute, within a minute and a half. Okay, and that's what we're working on. So that's really why I show you this. This is a horrible picture. All I wanted to show is this uh, mediastinum. It's his picture. Yes. Mediastinum. What is um, And that is just a location, a word for you to know. It just means the space where the heart sits between the lungs. Isn't that the cardio notch? No. What is that? Something else. Okay. Mediastinum, just know the word. That's all, I wanted a better picture. All right, we know about the two phases of <coughs> blood pressure, the systole and the diastole, which we now call what? Systolic, Systolic and diastolic, very good. And here are some things about the myocardium that we may or may not know. There is a word called automaticity. This is a property only found in the myocardium, and it is the ability to generate electricity. Okay, it generates electricity. If you want to come to medic school, I will certainly teach you how that happens. It's very complex, and you'll learn about sodium potassium pumps and things going in and out, negative potentials, and it's great, great stuff. We just don't do it in EMT school. Where is that electricity going? Well, you'll get to it in a minute. So, automaticity is really the main word that you should learn here. It's the ability to create an electrical impulse. So where is that electricity going? Um, I think I've shown this before or maybe touched on it. It starts up here in the right atrium at something called the SA node. If you talk to medical professionals, um, they will use the term sinus. I told you this, right? When we look at an EKG, first thing I want to see, is it sinus? What does that mean when you hear of two doctors or medics talking and they say, oh, it's sinus. What does that mean? It's it's starting starting it means it's starting where it's supposed to in the nose. right atrium at the SA node. So you already know that that's a good sign. It's sinus. There are bad sinus rhythms also. There is sinus bradycardia, okay, which means it's starting here, but it's way too slow. There are sinus tachycardias, all right, and there are sinus arrests, sinus, lots of things. However, for now, all you need to know is that word, SA note. We know that the SA note typically beats at 60 to 100 times per minute, all right? And there is a backup system. The first backup system is called the junction or the AV node. And here it is, the atrioventricular node. That's by the division? Is that where it is? It's right here where the atrium ends and the ventricle starts. Is there blood going between the top two atrium? These yellow lines are not showing okay. blood oh, movement. Showing electricity. That's electric. Got it. Electricity. And it goes on both sides. Just yeah. when I thought I understood the heart. Okay, so yes, electricity starts here. The SA node up here goes into the left atrium, goes to the junction, and then splits into the left and the right bundle of his. You will not be tested on this. Okay? I'm just giving you the information so you understand. Frank, no blood. We're not dealing with blood flow. So I, I, just, I thought there was blood passing there. I'm like, oh. Right, if blood is passing through here, this is yeah, a problem. abnormality of the heart, which we can deal with, but not right now. Okay? So this electricity. Um, the AV node, or the junction as it's called colloquially, is um, a backup system. If it doesn't get an impulse or electricity coming from the SA node, 
it will start to generate one on its own. Again, when we look at an EKG, we can say, hey, that's a junctional rhythm. Right? What are we saying? We're saying that the SA node has gone to sleep or died or got sick. And so now we're seeing that the junction, the AV node, has kicked in. Um, generally, we'll only. How can you tell that? On the EKG. Generally, we will see rates of between 40 and 60, but just to confuse it, there are things called accelerated junctional rhythms. So you could have a rhythm way above 60, and I could still tell you it's coming from the junction. And not something EMTs have to worry about. On the EKG. Also, I saw so these questions to one of the. the um, Electro, okay, and he's like, if you have six weeks, I can explain it to you. Okay, <laughs> six yeah, weeks one. probably isn't enough. I was just asking about one. Oh, one line. One, one line on the right. EKG. Like, if you have six. He's weeks, right. Like, yes. Like, slow heart rate could, could also mean that there could also be that uh, it's still coming from the SA node. Right? That's correct. That there would be a sinus bradycardia, which could be really slow, but it's coming from the SA node. How it could also be a just a plain bradycardia, junctional bradycardia, which means that we're in this realm of bradycardia, kite, nus, um, and it's coming from the junction. So oh, all mean, this stuff is what we want to do on scene and figure this all out. So the chart it gives you it gives you all those measurements. It gives you the old SA chart. It gives you the and it also gives you the the punchy key Which chart? which yeah, chart? On your uh, what's it called? Yeah, yeah, on the EKG. It. The EKG gives you all of those um, currents? No, you have to count them. Count will the AV node... No, but will the AV node kick in if the SA node is too Brady? It may. If it's Brady, no, probably not. Or the AV died. node will not kick in if it's getting the impulse from above it. I hear your question. I don't think it will. Good question. Adi. Yes, Next. Yeah, the only way to tell the difference of that is through the, through the EKG, whether it's the SA or the AV. Yeah. They have these little tools that they okay. measure. These little tools. <laughs> no, that's not how they know? No. Um, <laughs> after <laughs> that, there is still oh, a backup yeah. system. <laughs> There's still a backup system. If the SA node and the AV node go down, the heart can pace itself <laughs> through the Purkinje fibers, which are at the end of the bundles of his. Left and right, now we split up into a left and a right situation. Then the most they can do is about 20 to 40 beats per minute. This person is going to be at death's door. Let's use a non-medical term. Um, very, very close to death. And then things need to be done. When do the Bikini fibers kick in? When the SA node and the AV node give up. Or and stop. That's your last stop. The it's the last. This is the last backup. And yes, there could be something called an accelerated idioventricular um, rhythm. Yes, but again, not for tonight. So when are they in V fib? When they're in V fib is when the electricity is not causing any sort of systole and diastole, just the quiver. We'll get to it. We'll get to it. So what is an AED? And here we have a modern <coughs> picture of an AED. Nice. Um, not one that EMTs would typically use. This is a very basic model. Uh, you will typically have two separate pads that you can apply uh, on the correct placement of the chest. I will show you in skill night how to actually apply the AED pads. Um, so what does the AED do? What does it mean? Let's start with the name. AED. Automated. External defibrillator. All three words we need to understand. Automated, automatic. on its own, automatic. External, on the, on the outside. It's not an internal one, because there are internal ones also. Defibrillator, let's talk about that word. Because it's quivering and you're stopping. Right, so this action of the heart, the quivering, we said is called fibrillation. That's just general. Fibrillation. We want to apply De some electricity that will defibrillate. defibrillate. What does that mean? Stop, Stop, the Stop. Stop the quivering, all right? So that's what's going on. Momentarily stops the heart, and hopefully it'll start up again 
it's sinus. Like, it's like restarting a computer when you have... Yes, yeah, very similar, very, very, it's always the same. <laughs> and the risks are the same too. <laughs> um, when do we use an AD? When do we use an AD? We come on scene, we find a patient who is unconscious, pulseless, and apneic. Not breathing. <laughs> You're welcome. They are unconscious, pulseless, and apneic. They are dead. We can use an AD. This is something that test question you often see, so I just stuck it here. Um, if pediatric pads are not available, use adult pads. We'll talk about that more soon. Okay, so since you keep asking me about EKGs, I threw in here a couple just so you get an idea. You're not going to learn how to read them. Uh, this is what VFib looks like on a monitor. Uh, however, this is uh, coarse VFib. There's also fine VFib. Uh, but if a medic sees that, he should right away make a decision that we need to defibrillate. Your AED that you will be provided will read the rhythm for you. You do not need to make, that's the A, the automated. You will not need to make any decisions. You have a job. Who? The AED. No, I can only read two rhythms. Okay? <coughs> so, you will not need to make any decisions. And this, you should know, this is V-fib. This is the most common um, rhythm that people go into right away when they die. And the other one is called pulseless ventricular tachycardia. Okay? Uh, again, you don't need to worry about this too much. It's just here so you can see. The AED can read both of these. The AED does not know if they have a pulse or not. So, this comes in two flavors. Okay, this is VTAC with a pulse or VTAC pulseless. And you only use an AED if they're pulseless. Yes. Well, it won't shock if it's not pulseless, no? Discover no pulse. It won't shock if it's not pulseless. Under, Doesn't under it say, like, uh, like... Oh, no, it'll shock this. That, but the regular, the regular <laughs> AD is the, the EMT. It'll shock this. Oh, well, <laughs> shock this. Yes. If you... If you... <laughs> if, if the AD only reads... I'm going to use it. Listen, it doesn't know if he's pulseless. If someone defibrillates someone that has a pulse... Not good. It, not good. Take away right? the license. That's, no, it's a regular person. They do it. They, they, Not good. Okay. That's the only time. Like the That's the only time that the AED could be dangerous. Could be. All right. B tap the pulse. Yeah. All right. Okay. Asystole. This is the flat line, famous uh, dead. Um, this you cannot Why not? shock. You cannot defibrillate dead. I know they do in all the movies. <laughs> It is wrong. It's Hollywood. It's not it's true. A, well, it, it's just useless. It's not. Right. It you help. need this electrical activity. You need it. Flatline means it's too late. To yeah. Do that. Can't shock. Flatline, you would administer CPR. Flatline, you do CPR. Okay. Get medics. You don't um, do CPR while you're with those AEDs in between? You're also pausing. No, the AED. <laughs> The AED will tell clear. you no shock, because it's not you're a shock for rhythm. I said in between, dying. you're still doing CPR while you're... While you're no, but the, get to that. The AED will say no shockable rhythm, because there's no shockable rhythm. Like, just continue but you should still be doing CPR. You can't pronounce that. Oh, okay. PEA. Okay, so this, this looks... Um, not sure where you found this. This looks like a sinus rhythm. That's, um, that's what PEA will look like. The name of the picture was PEA. Oh. Mm -hmm. The name of the picture was okay. PEA. Um, PA, <laughs> PA looks like um, a bradycardic rhythm, such as this, oh, may look like this, um, that's fine. Um, it looks like a normal rhythm. So what happens if a patient goes into PA and the medic sees this? What's the first thing that somebody has to do? Medics are on the scene. You won't see this if they're not on the scene. Shock. CPR. No. CPR. You're doing CPR. The medic sees this. 
What should he ask you to do? Or what should you remind the medic someone needs to do? Pause CPR. Pause CPR. So they can see if this is being Still looks like this. Then now what? Check for his pulse. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. Pulseless electrical activity. It gives a rhythm as if the person is alive. But it doesn't know if there's a pulse or not. What does it mean? The monitor. The monitor. Right. The monitor can't feel a pulse. It only reads electrical activity. So there is one rhythm called PEA, pulseless electrical activity. Well, how does that work? Why? Oh. No, sorry, no. Sorry, sorry. No. There. Not tonight. Yeah, I went there. Okay. So if you're working up a cardiac arrest with a medic, and a medic says, "Oh, I've got a rhythm." Somebody has to check for, pulse. check for a pulse. Because if there's a pulse, you may have a blood pressure and the patient may be back. You gotta check for a pulse after you stop CPR because the pulse can be caused by the compressions. Well, that could be caused by the compressions, but we're talking about during a pause. Right. But, but they, they were telling them when we were learning that, that before they only to check pulse if, you, if there's a, a change in. There is a change. Every two heart. minutes. Every two minutes. Every two minutes. You don't sit there compressing the guy for 20 minutes. You, you stop every two minutes and reassess. Right. Special, some special considerations. The patient is wet. You really need to dry the patient's chest. Doesn't matter if they're in some water, per se. Just the chest area needs to be wiped down with something, so it should be... Um, dry. Hypothermic patients, there is this maximum of three defibrillations because you may be causing more harm if you keep defibrillating. Isn't there a maximum of three anyways? Yeah, but with hypothermic patients that you're stuck and you can't move or one thing and another, you may think to keep going uh, like... But in general, the three is the maximum also, right? But en route, you can keep defibrillating. Okay. Patients on a conductive surface, if the patient is on a metal surface, such as the back of a uh, loading truck type of thing, and you defibrillate them, the electricity will go down through them into the conductive surface and up into you. It happened to a friend of mine, so not a good thing to do. And then there were two patients. If they, no, through the shoes and everything. On a metal surface? Wasn't so bad. Pacemakers and implanted defibrillators, a lot of patients have them. They feel like a small pack of cigarettes or a deck of card uh, right under the chest. You can't do the you, you gotta let me finish? Thank you. You are to still use your defibrillator. Just place the pads about an inch away. Do not place pads right over internal um, pacemaker defibrillators. You just go back. AED um, uh, make a problem for the pacemaker for afterwards. Let's say you get a back. As long as you're not on top of it. AED is a metal thing. You shouldn't. You're better off to get some sort of. Yeah, you're better off getting some sort of towel or blanket underneath that. Even that will go through if it's strong enough. No, the pacemaker's broken. That's why they went into... That's what they went into. That's what move the patient and then... Because otherwise the pacemaker's not supposed to check. Moving vehicles, we do not defibrillate in a moving vehicle for obvious reasons, okay? You've got to see safety. If you're defibrillating somebody in the back of a moving ambulance, you tell the driver to pull over, you shock, and then you go further because you can't fall or get bumped or whatever um, onto patients being shocked. Poor electrode adhesion. So one of the biggest problems we have is with a hairy chest, okay, in men also. And <laughs> there are really two options. A lot of us carry portable razors, which there's really no time for. What I do is what I call the $80 waxing, okay? <laughs> Set of pads cost about $80. You place the pads where you want them to be. You rip them off and then put a new pair of pads in the places. Okay? Do you do that on weekends? Yes. $80 waxing, I call it. 
<laughs> undergarments, obviously, all yeah, clothing. Can't do that with, right? All clothing needs to be removed from the waist up. All clothing, undergarments, everything's got to go. There are no extra pants for AD. There are. Shiny. They're just expensive. The mini electrodes are not expensive. I sell them. You're not paying for them, so. <laughs> okay. Um, using the defibrillator, first of all, we Give need to slogan. check for these three things. Unresponsive, apneic, and pulseless. We should know this by now. Same as CPR. Whenever you're doing CPR, you want to have a defibrillator at your side. So how do we use it, okay? Very, very simple. Um, there are two pads. Uh, today, on the pads, they won't look like this. They will just show one pad in the correct placement, and the other one will show the other pad. But this is very good so you understand. Here's the heart in the mediastinum. This is the patient's right upper quadrant. No. No. Chest. chest. <laughs> and this is right under the heart. Okay, left lower. Is that like mid-axillary or it's a little bit towards the front? No, it's a little more. It's a little lower than mid-axillary and more, it's like half on the chest and half on the heart. Does not go on the heart. Okay. Are there instructions on the pad? You will not have time to read instructions. That's a little big in that picture. Is that heart a little big in that picture? Maybe. It's just a picture. Um, oh, that's not a real heart? If you go and learn some real medicine, there is something called the Einhoven's Triangle. I'm not teaching it tonight. This is lead two of the Einhoven Triangle. Obviously, how many leads do you think there are? Three. Very good. That's why it's called a triangle. So this would be lead two. This is why we're placing them here. Okay? All right, how do we use it? So I have four universal steps. I suggest you learn them. Learn them. Step number one, it switch on. it on. Good. Oh, it won't work if it's off. <laughs> Step number two, apply the pads to the patient's bare chest. The fibrillators will talk to you. Unfortunately, when we're doing CPR in a crazy environment, in a crazy location, you're not going to be able to hear it. And if you've got to listen to it, you know, change your day job. You've got to know how to do this, okay? So you're going to practice on, I have great defibrillators here. They're uh, made by Fisher Price. They're my first defibrillator. Um, and uh, well, that's what they look like. But they actually operate in exactly the same way as the real ones. When you place the pads in the correct uh, places, plug it in. And then you give plug a shock if the machine lets you. Plug it in to the, to the defibrillator. It in the to the defibrillator. Okay. You'll see. You'll see on skill night how to do it. Okay. Okay, good. Good. We've got somebody actually doing CPR. Now she wants to defibrillate. This is very good. I like this picture. Let me explain why I like this picture. Because she's not looking at the defibrillator. And this is a mistake a lot of EMTs make. They find the defibrillator, they put the pads on, and then they focus down on the defibrillator and forget about the patient. So you want to find the button, put your finger over it. Good. Now I'm ready. Now I clear the scene, make sure there's no family members, no orderlies, no nurses, no, you know, yeah, whatever it is, get everybody away. And you say, I'm clear, you're clear, we're all clear, shock. I know that song. And I always look at the patient, never at the machine. The machine knows what it's doing. How long should that take you? From between, when you're ready to shock and tell everybody clear and make sure that. Two seconds. See? She's doing good. I like that. Oh, we got more pictures. Well, we don't do mouth to mouth, so that should go. Unless, of course, he's staying in place. Sure. She's got to go. 
unless it's stay employed. <laughs> this could stay. Strong, you don't fire tonight. He's sitting in LEC. It's better than that. All right. So maybe it's not out here. It's just a seat. All right. So, a couple of things. Immediately after shocking a patient, you resume CPR compressions. Should we say that again? No, unless the patient wakes up. Immediately after um, defibrillation. Do you wait to defibrillate until you've done 30 compressions yes. and then stop wait. and then do it? Every two minutes. Okay. You turn about the initial first one, use it as soon as the defibrillator gets it. So if you're in the middle of compression, stop? Stop, do it. And then start from See, the it says to and then if you arrive with the AED and you check pulse and no pulse, no breathing, you apply the AED right And away. then your partner will start setting up the AED and then you'll get it, you'll see if it allows you to shock or not. Right. How mm -hmm. long after you finish shocking do you restart CPR immediately? Like, In, there's no, there's no, there's no um, residual Which part of immediately is no, no, unclear? There's, no, there's no residual <laughs> Immediate. Immediately. A second you take your finger off, it's resume. Okay. okay, resume CPR. Uh, you're allowed to shock, I think, twice on scene, um, and then you have to initiate transport. If you get a no shock advised, you need to initiate transport. Okay? Do you check after the shock? You don't check for a pulse and resume CPR? Immediately resume CPR. Compression. Compression, not CPR. CPR. Compression. Compression. Immediate. Absolutely not. No pulse check. After two minutes, the machine's going to say analyzing, shock advised or no shock advised. If it says no shock advised, then you need to check for a pulse, check for breathing, whatever you want to check. If it says no shock advised, you need to right away resume CPR compressions and initiate and transport. Minutes. It says no shock advised for two minutes to check for a pulse, because no shock advised... Yes, that's what I said. Right. Check for pulse and initiate transport. Initiate. If it says shock advised, don't even check for a pulse. Just let it do its thing. If they were in cardiac arrest. Yeah, but that couldn't that mean detail? No, they they won't go into from arrest, V fib arrest into V type with a pulse. Unlikely. Shock again. Initiate transport means stop moving the thing. Initiate transport means stop moving them to Yeah, get the equipment in that you need, get more Resources, whatever it means. <laughs> are, we, are we passing notes? <laughs> no, look at your phone. Uh, I think I'm going to look at the board for now. I was shocked. The, the uh, definition of immediate. <laughs> and he said, 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 he uh, I put this here, you will now be tested on it, Thank you. but just in case Thank someone you. says, what's a Sube. joule, or how many volts is it, Sube. it's not measured in volts, or in um, anything else, measured in joules, which is a watt per second. Right. Yeah, we don't need to worry about it. Eli, it's a Sumi also. Yeah. Okay, it's a way of cooking. Oh, you know, it's... Yeah. Um... Overall AD use, it says that we're going to do BSI scene safety. Determine that we have a patient in cardiac arrest. Begin CPR. Set up the defibrillator. And... Stop CPR. So you're not supposed to expose the chest before you begin CPR? You are. So he's doing it wrong. Thing. Yes. So he's a bystander and she well, is another awesome. bystander. Apparently. So they know they're done. Yeah, if they put the pads over the guy's shirt... you come to your class. No, right. Nothing's going to happen. Let it on fire, <laughs> Special situations... I, I don't really worry about this too much. The, the, obviously, if you... Sometimes you're ready to shock, and you it says shock advised, and you're clearing everybody, all of a sudden Bob sits up and goes, Hello! <laughs> Probably shouldn't shock him at that point. Why is my chest shaking? Okay. Um, yeah. So you need to. Do all the instructors say that, or just you? Fine. Because you're the best. All right. All right. Wait. 
If you do the eighty dollar wax and then you wake up screaming. <laughs> so it's a pain test. You need to just you need to shut it off. You need to shut the defibrillator because remember those pads are live, ready to shock. So shut it off. If you shut it off, it will discharge the um, the charge that it has, and some after 15 seconds of inactivity will also automatically discharge. Nice. I'm surprised they allow uh, 